Originally the film was set on a nice but dim nutrition student. He was a mature student, he was unemployed, he went back. He's a bit thick. I was going to play the character myself. I had the kind of voice down and I knew what I was going to be doing with the character. So I ended up turning that into a rapper because I had to be on camera. I had access to all this equipment inside in the light all the music equipment. So I said, right, he's going to be a rapper, I can do this. Let's make the film. I've always associated the name McNamara as a real kind of limerick name. You know, if you the way you say it, McNamara, McNamara, I'll just try saying McNamara in my normal voice, McNamara. You know, I've met so many people over the years by the name of McNamara. They're just, they're different. You know, with McNamara, it's hinted at that he has a drink problem. Um, so that's hinted at. I didn't want it to be too obvious out there, but it's hinted that he does have a drink problem. When I got a look at the script, it was, it was okay. You know, it, it could have been better. Philip's a top actor. He's great. I can use him. Um, I suppose I was just... Uh, I was doing a favour for him, really. That was all. You know. So then I said, I let Philip sit in on auditions with me. We said, we'll go through the actors, see what they're like. If they're good, we'll cast them. I came in and there was a couple of lads. I came in, Nathan. Nathan, one of the lads in, in, in John's class. First actor we had in was Nathan. Nathan is a, is a fine lad. Thanks for coming in. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to say the line, so then you come in and you, you read your lines. Okay, okay, no problem. Okay, so let's come in now. So who do you think you are? I'm Tyrone McNamara, rapper. Um, not up to scratch. Definitely not up to scratch. Thanks, Nathan. That's, that's could, good. Could I give it one more shot? Um, yeah, fire away there. Okay. I'm Tyrone McNamara, rapper. Yeah, thanks, Nathan. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And he did a fine audition though, Nathan, but he, he wasn't quite right for that role. But I made sure to keep Nathan on board in the film because he's a fine lad, he's a good actor, he's a great future. So I said, yeah, Nathan, we'll give you a role. So I got him a role. So I was still struggling for an actor and I said, right, it hit me in the head. Jar Kennedy. Well, I was approached by John O'Shea, the director, and he had told me that he had seen some of my work. I'd done a stop motion in the past called Speed Is No Game, where I played a gangster type rapper. And he did this voiceover work, which was perfect for the role of McNamara. Jason Shun, cuz I wanna be a rapper, proper gangster. There's some boy racer flying around the place, is that? Get out of the way, boys! Get out of the way! And I also had done another film called An Unwelcome Visitor with a man kind of with a knackery kind of accent too. She told your man if he didn't get out of there, she'd ring the guards. Ah, will you keep your knickers on you, will you? I was slightly hesitant at the start because I didn't want to be typecast as a gurrier, some sort of a scumbag. But I thought I'd give it the benefit of the doubt that John kind of convinced me of the role and I went with it. Phil didn't know Jar, so Phil said doesn't matter, I want to see him in an audition. So I said, fine Phil, we'll get him in. Hi Jar, thanks for coming in. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, there was something unique about him, definitely. Um, the way he posed himself, the, the way he, he carried himself and changed into the character. Definitely, definitely raw talent there. Okay. Who are you supposed to be? I'm Tyrone McNamara, rapper. Jar, come in. The rest is history. He was brilliant. Very Can we go again? Yeah, that was, that was excellent. I'm thank you. I'm Tyrone McNamara, rapper. Uh, Philip Shanahan, and who plays Fiona Shaughnessy, and John were the ones that auditioned me, and I think that they were impressed, you know, the way I was able to turn into that character. As so I was able to talk my natural tone, and then go to, I'm Tyrone McNamara, rapper. And I think that they were kind of impressed by that. Jared, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. I thought that was very good now. Yeah, I think, I think, we, I think we found our McNamara. Okay. He could, he could have brought it further, I thought. And, uh, you know, but, you know, such is life. I needed a strikingly attractive lead actress, you know, a femme fatale. Someone who would cause nations to launch a thousand ships, like, like Helen of Troy, let's say. Jenny was probably the only girl in our class, so I said, Jenny, Will you do this? She nailed her lines perfectly. Perfectly. So, see you later anyway, okay? Okay, thanks. Bye.
Brilliant. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Bye. Yeah, I did audition. I only had two lines, which was like, okay, bye, which is a bit weird. Like, I didn't know why I had to audition for two lines. I, I don't know why he, um, he auditioned uh, Jenny, to be honest, because uh, she had no lines. Like, acting's really instilled in me since I was a child, so... I was like, why not go for it? I was like, I'm going to give it my all, these two lines. Why not? It's like, you only live once. Phil was impressed. Jenny, mad about the role. It's great. No problems. He had no feckin' lines to give her, so there was that. So the character of Fiona Shockley, he was partially based on a teacher we'd had in the past. On our first day of college, and first year, he had had a right go at someone, me Hall is his name, who hadn't brought in a pen and paper. I ended up using that as inspiration for this character of Fiona Shocknessy, a real die-hard guy. This guy could have been in the army. He could have done many things. He was a serious man and a powerful man. Don't mess with him. You don't fuck with him. It's his way or the highway. And he, he lays down the law early on. Do you not bring a pen and paper with you even, though? No? Yeah, I mean, I suppose he was lucky in that fact that I came along because there was very little on page, um, character-wise or anything, and, and, and uh, I did, I, I mean, I, I came up with the dialogue and, and the direction of, of where Fionn was going. I thought the script was really good. It really interested me, this kind of a character. I'd never played that before, and it was something I kind of wanted to get to grips with. As soon as I read that script and I saw the kind of person that he was, I wanted to be able to prove to myself that, yeah, I can carry this, I can take this off pretty well. I never really saw a script, like, John was out of printer credit and he said he, he kept saying he'd send it on to me, but, like, he never did, which I thought was quite strange, like, going into a movie and you didn't know the script or you didn't know the storyline or what your character was going to, like, progress out through the movie, which I thought was really weird, and I was told I would be the breakout star of this movie. Okay, so it's four one scene. 9.1, take one. The first scene I shot was a pivotal scene in the film. It's when McNamara asked Nettie out for a date. He asked her for some chicken, some bowling, something like that, anything like that. Maybe some sex, possible, if she's in for it. So that was a big scene. But by God, did they nail it. Nettie, yeah. don't get to go for a bowling, I'll be out on the button. Nadia, Jenny, Nadia, as I sometimes call her, I get the two of them mixed up. They're so similar as characters. Bang. Perfect. Perfection. Action. Well, we had everything set up to go filming. It was going to be a scene where Tyrone makes his move on the lovely Nadia and he's going to try and woo her. Of course, we know it doesn't work out too well for him. But um, we had everything set up, cameras. There we are, doing the scene. Everything's going well. And then I just hear this noise. Oh dear. Every bloody Thursday we tried to do this and it just carried on. We'd be filming on a few different Thursdays and the groundskeeper would always arrive and start cutting the grass. Or doing something else with a chainsaw. Yeah, I think there was a few occasions where Jar did get a fit of giggles. Well, I like to think of myself as a serious character actor, but there were a few scenes that I could not control the laughter. Bring your own pen and paper. Oh, you want to watch it now? Hi, no, I don't feel good, right? You know where to go. Because the script really called for that. It was such an amusing tale to tell. So we'll give this <sighs> puffing at me. Here, we can use that. Oh, and I suppose you need a pencil as well, dear. Go on. He just kept laughing. And we all kind of cracked up off each other. Although Phil Shanahan, who plays Fiona Shockingsea, was kind of contrary to me at times about that. He had a problem. I think he had a twitch or something there. And uh, I remember just pulling Jer aside uh, five minutes afterwards. It's a quiet word. And I said, look, um, look, I'm uh, a bit worried. Uh, he took me aside after one take and said, I think you have a disorder. Um, there's a, you know, uh, it looked like you were stroking there. I 
hate him working with him. He is not one bit professional and it just annoys me to talk about him. Yeah, I don't think he liked me from day one. Like, like if it was a scene that had a lot of tension in it, like he just uh, like starts smiling and it was really hard for me to take the scene seriously as well. Like so, but other than that, he's he's a good enough actor, like you know. No. Oh, go on. Do you want to go chicken on instead, maybe? No, I'm okay. Want a bit of chicken? Oh. I had a background in music. I was part of a band called Skinflint, very successful in terms of producing albums. We made one on a stereo tape cassette in 1996 and about 20 of our friends, maybe 30, heard it. And we became popular enough with a track called Robotic Lover. Ever hear that one? No. Who's Taken the Horse to France? Another one? No? No, no. Okay, that was based on a carry goal that. But we were pretty popular. So anyway, cut a long, long story short, I had a musical background. So I, I used some music that I downloaded from YouTube and I said, right, I'm gonna write a rap to this. So that was fine. So I presented it to Jar. I said, Jar, just mimic what I'm rapping. Yes, now that was a very challenging part of the role. I was asked to do a rap where Matnamara's making up a rap, he's singing for Nadia who he is very, very attracted to. Jar is actually a really good rapper. I think John originally was going to do the music and, and John gave him a, a piece uh, to show him where, where the high note was going to be. So I thought this would be no problem for Jar. I thought he'd be able to hit that note. And of course, John's voice is, is, it does, does really reach the roof, you know, uh, pitch-wise. Quite high-pitched. Hits the high notes. I can do that. I've, I've got a, a dynamic, rich voice. Poor old Jar. No. He's got more of a high pitched kind of girly voice, you could say, whereas I'd be more kind of a deeper voice. And I, I did struggle to kind of reach that tone. Also, it was quite comical listening to him take that tone and how feminine it sounded. Nadia. But I'm a man, a real man. Yeah, we were in the sound booth for maybe a couple of hours and uh, I'd, um, I'd, a, I'd a few bits and pieces done myself. I, I was in Lickety Split, you know? and. Uh, delivered the lines and came back out and, and I remember they were doing pickups for jurors and John turned around to me and said, look, we, I'd prefer if you stayed around because I might get you to do a bit more afterwards. So I said, yeah, fine, no problem. Look, I, I can get the bus back later on. So I got into the studio and I tried to give it a go. A little bit of problems. Actually, there was a big problem. I was sitting down and he was, he was delivering the rap lines, the lines in the actual music, and uh, I, uh, to be honest, I was none too impressed because he just, he kept, he couldn't hit that high note. I did struggle on one of the notes during the rap. It was, just, it was a line about holding him fast or something like that, and I just thought that I was not able to hit that high tone. Nadia, you're lighting up my heart. I mean, Nadia, you're trying to light. That day when he couldn't hit the note, like, there was serious tension on set, like John was ready to just like throw stuff at him. Nadia, you lighten up my heart. I've even bunch. <sighs> so there we were for about an hour, two hours, take 40. We were there for about two hours. I missed the bus. It was that one line. He couldn't just get that one line. And I, the whole production was lying on this. Nadia, you lighten up my heart. I'm even trying to hold in fart. He couldn't get it out of him. Um, it was the fart, that's what it was. I, uh, that's what I remember, it was the fart. We were like, oh, we're on a deadline now, like, you know, we need to... We needed to get it, it was so late in the day, with everything else shot, we needed to get this line. I'm even trying to haul in fart. Just when we thought all hope was gone. Nadia, you're lighting up my heart. I've even tried to haul in fart. He got it. But in the end, I give him credit, he did get the note. You know, and it turned out really good. So finally, I hit the note. And we got there, we got it done. I was happy that Phil Shanahan was there to see that because he kept complaining that I couldn't hit the note the whole time. I goes, John, what's the story? Are we down the line? And John goes, um, no, I think we wrap up. So, uh, so outside of doing this interview, I haven't really talked to him since. I know Phil had some problems there. He had to get a bus. He wasn't too happy about that. I know I haven't really spoken to Phil since then. I hope he's okay. I hope he's keeping well because I, I might have another film I'd like him to be in. Um, 
getting access to the equipment was a bit uh, hard at times um, and, and de definitely getting our equipment that worked uh, was another thing. Um, the crew trying to get a, a stable tripod, yeah, no, good luck with that. The crew trying to get uh, sound equipment, um, no, good luck with that. And the old lad that was there, I um, heard some great stories about how, you know, how nice he was and stuff. And I did, I've dealt with Pat before, Pat's fine, you bring in the gear, he gives you your card. I remember talking to him one day, he chewed the absolute bollocks out of me. Um, I was like, do I need this? And uh, he was asking me who I was, where I was going. I said, none of your fucking business, mate. Where's your card? I said, I don't have a card. Um, at first I thought he was talking about a business card and I just handed him that. Um, and he threw it back in my face. He, he says, you're not to be in here. Well, we got the rap scene done in the studio and we were bringing back the equipment to Pat. On this one day, I was dealing with a microphone I hadn't used before. He got out some weird sensitive microphone on, a, on some sort of a, a rig. He was bringing it back to Pat. And Pat turned around us and, and started to chew the bollocks out of him. Did I give, it, did I give that outro like that? And he just hurled abuse at John, really. He gave out to him, saying that he broke the microphone, well, which I, I didn't set up the microphone. I'm not taking responsibility for that. The child wouldn't have done that. Pat said I broke it. I, I, I didn't break it. I didn't break it, fairness. But he wasn't happy, and it did get me down. I think John might have began drinking at that point. Uh, I think that was when things kind of went downhill for him. He's a ferocious man, Pat, and you don't want to get in his wrong side. I didn't want to get in his wrong side, but that day I did. But that's just the, 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 the level of ineptitude, I suppose you could call it, uh, that just that was coupled uh, with the overall production. Recording. See what I mean? Mark Demara, scene 3.2, take one. That scene. Whew. Well, when we filmed that scene in the classroom and Philip became Fiona Shognesi again, I knew straight away that I was in the presence of a really talented actor. You know, he was phenomenal in the part. Before I found out that he was going to be in this film, like I was like, oh, how's this going to go? Like, you know, not like I didn't really know if there was going to be any talent other than me in it. Like, you know, but then I found out Phil was in it, and I was like, that really upped my game. Then, like, and I suppose I was a bit intimidated on one side of things, but on the other point of view, he's not better than me. I matched him stride for stride, I think, and I was very happy with the outcome. Like, I don't think I'm at the level he is yet, like, but you know, I really want to somebody. He's just incredible. It's probably the best acting I've seen in the five short films I've been involved in. It, it was a very temperamental scene, if I remember correctly. Um, he had about maybe 2% of the scene written down. He had about, um, he hadn't a clue where he, uh, where he wanted it to go as such. So do you, want to, do you want to just try and just get the whole lot in one, one thing? Well, if you can retain it all, that's yeah. it. Like, you know, I wanted to break it up yourself. Well, you know, well, I'll tell you now. So I was offering to cut up the scene for Philip to make it easier for him. Just so he could do one bit, second bit, third bit. One take, that's all he needed. And he just said, get out of my way, I'm in my zone. I said, okay, Phil, give me what you got there. That's grand. It, it took very, it, it, it took a lot trying, trying not to hit the man, to be honest, because he'd set up the camera and he wanted to do one line and then he'd write another line and then he'd, he'd record again and show me the written line. And I said, look, just write out the bloody lines. Um, I'll get it in one take. One take, all the way through. 50 seconds of acting. It almost spiralled into fisticuffs, definitely. Myself and Phil Shanahan, we could not see eye to eye when we were doing scenes, and I felt like I had to kind of gain his respect, if you will. He was kind of looking down on me, and it just felt like that I was enough to scratch for his point of view. And that, that really left a bad taste in my mouth. But I feel in the end, I proved him wrong. So what you got to say now, Phil Shanahan? John, he'd like make these really little like flirtatious comments and it was just really, really weird like, you know. Touching her shoulder, telling her, look, can you give me the performance a little bit more softer and a bit more heavy breath. And he kept like 
wanting to go out for drinks and he'd be like, when I'm on my way home, he'd be like, oh, do you want to come to mine for a coffee and stuff like that. He was coming across, across quite, um, quite weird in that sense, or, you know, uh, ew, kind of a feel, you know. I felt like it was kind of McNamara all over again, but in real life, like him constantly trying to get with me, but like, I'm just pushing him back and I felt really mean as well. I don't remember all of what happened at the end of production. I may have asked Jenny out on a date, it's possible. Um, I don't know if she said yes or no. I don't know even if we had a date. No, I don't think you had a date. Did we not have a date? Okay. And then when like I said no, I'm not interested. His attitude, like he went completely cold with me. Like you know, he wouldn't. He would barely talk to me and said he wouldn't give me direction. The scene in the movie was John kept telling me it will come, it will come. Just let's get like through the day, and then your scene will come. But like it never did. Like and I was prepared for it. Like Jenny, of course, is a lovely actress. She was fantastic in the film. I had to unfortunately cut some of her role out of it just for time constraints. I thought this is what I signed up for, like I'm a star, like. The first scene we shot, McNamara is waiting outside the toilets when he goes over and says to Nadia, do you want to go for some chicken? In that scene, we were going to have, actually have Nadia, Jenny, go to the toilets and come out of the toilets. So that would have upped her screen time by about 15 seconds. We weren't going to go into the toilets. That would have been a bit, going a bit too far. Maybe if it was an art house film. It kind of is an art house film, I suppose. I was carrying around equipment and I get John his coffee and his tea or whatever he wanted and that's not really what I was there for. Like She wasn't happy, I think, after that. She thought I was kind of treating her badly because she said no or something. Yeah, you could see that she was, she was really, really getting, struggling um, to, um, to, to, to keep her cool with him. It was just, it was just really weird, like, you know. No, I didn't cut her role because of that, no. Because she said no to go out on a date with me. I cut her role. No, not true. That aside, the whole thing with John and Jennifer, it was like he asked her out and she said no, and it just made the rest of the shoot really awkward. But he was always talking to Nathan. And Nathan, yeah, there was, there was, there was an incident where he, he touched Nathan. No, no, no. These, see, this is now people slandering me. Uh, yeah, he, he touched him uh, on the knee and uh, I don't think Nathan was phased by it but uh, definitely everyone else in the room could see exactly what was going on and uh, none were impressed. No, no, no. Nathan, Nathan is, is a friend. He's a good lad, good actor. I don't remember touching. I, I might have been off balance and I probably grabbed his knee just to stay in balance. Uh, weird. That's all I can say. I don't, go, I don't touch men. And I wouldn't touch a woman either, if they didn't want me to. There was rumours going around that he hit the bottle pretty hard. Yeah, I think he likes the sauce, definitely. Yeah. Alcoholic. Yeah. I think the pressure got to him, like, immensely. Like, he'd come in some days, like, smelling of alcohol, and, like, when you talk to him, like, that's, like, not what you want to smell coming off his breath is just alcohol. When he was directing me, he was telling me how to act in a scene and what to do. It was very hard to understand him. I'd be like, sorry, could you repeat that numerous times? I felt like walking off set. I just got pissed off with it. I do like a drink. Uh, I do enjoy a drink, but I'm not in any way off the rails. I'm grand. He fell asleep. He fell asleep on set. No, no, I can drink everything under the sun. I wouldn't be, I mean, no, I don't drink everything under the sun. Um, some, some AD had to go over and wake him up. And when he got up, he went, yeah, that's fine, and, and left. And as he was leaving, he picked up the bag, and I'm pretty damn sure that there was a couple of liter bottles in there anyway, empty ones at that too. No, I'm always keep it together. If I am drinking, I'm like Denzel Washington in that film. The moment I discovered that it like really took a toll on him, I went up to the edit suite and he was completely passed out on the table. I couldn't wake him for like 10 minutes straight, I thought he was dead. I think John was on the sauce that day as well. It was scary, like, then like, when he was leaving, like, all these bottles fell out of his bag and I was like, oh my god, our like, director's an alcoholic, like, what am I gonna do? I was gonna like get him help, but I was like, 
the point. It was like John was drinking. We could not take him seriously. He was sweating around in the background. He'd talk, he'd give me a direction. He'd have slurred speech, and I could, I swear, I could get a whiff of whiskey off him. What was going on here? He told us, he promised us that this will go into the film festival and we would get recognition and we get a load of job opportunities from this and then he just didn't bother. I was really disappointed that we missed the Limerick Film Festival from the point of view that John had vowed that he would have it entered into the competition. And then the deadline passed and I, it wasn't entered at all. I was a bit sickened by that because I, he, I felt betrayed by John. He said that he would enter it and I felt this would be my opportunity to spread my wings, if you will, and become a really, really mainstream actor. After putting in so much hard work, like, and you know, my acting skills, like, I really try, like, I was exhausted, like, I give my everything to this film. I know it, it kind of meant an awful lot to, to Duran and, and Jenny, especially at the level they're at, like, um, but me not so much, no. After we, like, were finished completely, he just went on, like, like a bender. I went missing for a while. It was a week. I think, like, he just didn't care anymore, like, I think just the pressure got to him, like. I, I got on a train. I went to Galway. Then I met some good people up there. Don't know who they were, I can't remember their names now, but I got in the car. No one could contact him, no one could find him. I thought like he was gone missing at one point. Like We drove somewhere anyway, but I ended up waking up. Was it Cabin? In Cabin. In the park there, there was a park. Where the fuck am I now? Like, and I had no money left. My wallet was gone. So luckily enough, someone gave me a loan on their mobile phone. So I gave my father a ring, and he, he drove up to cabin, thankfully, picked me up, brought me home. But that's it's unfortunate. I know we missed out on the film festival, but there's other festivals. We can do other festivals. I really resent him for that. Like, he's not, he's not a filmmaker that I want to work with again. Like, he's just atrocious. We, we definitely all learned a valuable lesson on this shoot, that's for sure, yeah. I'm not finished. I can, I can make more films. Even if it's just me making a film, pressing record, and then being the actor myself in front of the screen, I can do that. And then I can put on a wig and play the opposite character. I'm versatile that way. And who needs actors anyway? Like, they're talking props. As long as you get the message across, I, I can do that. What's to say, really? Um, first time directorial debut. Yeah, sometimes you attach that to, to, to good pieces. Uh, was this a good piece? Um, next question. I'd like to get the crew back again to do another film. That's a question, isn't it? Would I work with him again? Like, John's a really good filmmaker, but like, I don't think I'll be working with him anytime soon again. If I was going to take part in a sequel to Matt Namara, or just another film not based on Matt Namara, then I think that I should be paid because I've made my name now. Do I sense any merit? Like, if he was to do a sequel, I wouldn't be there. Definitely not. I really should be getting bang for my buck, if you will. I should be getting money. You know what? Maybe if you could pay me. It's not really fair to expect someone to work for free. You know outside of McNamara's, uh, McNamara's uh, character, I think Fionn, Fionn deserves like at least, uh, at least a movie of his own, you know, definitely. I wouldn't get John to direct it though. No. Can you do not work again with me now? No, I don't think so, mate.
Stop on the door all the time. Fuck me hard, me hard man. But one of these days gonna be fucking on the streets because of these fuckers up in the dog. Gonna be fucking gonna bar. Fucking sick of this shit now. What the fuck are you doing no more? Can't take no more. Real quick, I'll chop. Quiet over, sit down there. There's a smell of piss in this room as well. <laughs> <laughs>